Good evening, everybody. Um, it's really lovely to see you visiting us tonight. Um, I am Jane. I'm one of the leadership team here at uh, Friars Baptist Church, and it's really good to be able to welcome you. And if it's your first time here, please come and make yourself known. Um, tomorrow morning, if you're around and you'd like to join a family service, um, one of the other members of our church, David Levy and the family, are going to lead um, a short Christmas morning service. The format tonight is it's a straightforward nine lessons and carols. So nothing will be announced. It will be carol reading, carol reading. Um, there are two video songs which we don't expect you to stand and sing with. If you want to do, please do. But they're, they're really good to listen to. Um, and we just hope you enjoy our evening with us this evening. The first reading is from Genesis 3, starting at verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. 
But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, curse are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken... (laughs) Since from it you were taken... For dust you are, and to dust you will return.
second reading is from Genesis 22, verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord came to Abraham from, from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sun sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities, their enemies, and through your offspring, nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed them. Verses 2, 6 and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
reading number four is taken from various parts of, his, of Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will, will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
reading is taken from Luke 26 to 35 and 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. reading is Luke chapter 2 verses 1 and then 3 to 7. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and everyone went to his own town to register. So 
Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have the baby, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. Shepherds and the Angels, Luke 2, verse 8 to 16. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David... A saviour has been born. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to the people, to men on, on whom his favour rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, 
Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. 
Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, hello. My name's Di Woodbridge, and I'd love to read a story to you if that's okay. This is a story I've written called Festive Fred Finds the Greatest Gift. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then I shall begin. One day, there lived a boy who loved Christmas. And when I say loved Christmas, I mean loved Christmas. With a capital L or V and E. He loved Christmas so much, he'd sing jingle bells in the shower eat mince pies for breakfast, and watch Christmas movies in the summer holidays whilst eating snow cones. He loved Christmas so much, he asked people to call him Festive Fred, even though his real name was actually Ryan. Oh, why do you love Christmas so much, Fred? sighed Mum. Frustrated the name Fred was beginning to stick. Oh, it's the best, Mum. We do a big shop and get lots of treats. Dad drives for ages to get the biggest tree. We put on our PJs and watch festive TV. And on Christmas Day, there are gifts just for me, said Fred, as he waved around his Christmas list and pointed to the supercharged Max 3000. Well, I know you love Christmas, but what about the very first Christmas, Fred? Asked Mum. The very first, pondered Fred. Yes, the nativity in Bethlehem, Mum said. Remember, you were in it last year. Oh, no, I definitely wasn't in Bethlehem, Mum. I'd remember that, said Fred. Well, no, Mum said, you weren't actually in the nativity story. That was 3,000 miles away and 2,000 years ago. But you did play a shepherd boy in a school nativity in Wrexham. Oh, yeah! I was the shepherd, but I really wanted to be Frank or Spence who gave gold, said Fred. Um, you mean wise men who give myrrh, frankincense and gold, Mum said. Exactly, said Fred, as he thought about the supercharged Max 3000, but in gold. You know, there's more to the story than just gifts, Fred. In fact, it's a story about the greatest gift, said Mum. Picture the scene, Fred. There are shepherds watching their flocks by night. <sighs> and as Mum began to tell the story, Fred was getting a little snoozy. He closed his eyes to picture the shepherds and their sheep. One by one, he started counting them. And then, da, 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 2,000 years ago, somewhere near Bethlehem. Thud! Ouch! My head, said Fred, as all of a sudden he awoke, face planted in a field of mud. Oops, are you okay? A shepherd boy said. Seems like you nodded off, fell over and hit your head. Uh, where am I? Asked Fred. Well, that's a silly question. You're in a field, the shepherd boy said. But what field? 
asked Fred, wondering if he went wandering into his neighbor's field again. Oh, only the bestest field in the whole of Bethlehem, the shepherd boy said. But, but, Bethlehem, bumbled a flabbergasted Fred, as he was pretty sure he was sat at home in Wrexham five seconds ago. Wait, you're a sh sh shepherd from the n n nativity, stuttered Fred, squeezing the boy's cheek to be sure he was real. Hey, quit squeezing my cheeks, the shepherd boy said. Fred couldn't believe it. He was 3,000 miles away and 2,000 years away from home. He was actually inside the very first Christmas story. Before Fred could think back to his school nativity play and remember what happened next, there appeared an angel in the sky. The angel was more terrific and tremendous than Fred had ever imagined, shining so bright and definitely no tinsel in sight. Don't be afraid, said the angel. It's good news about the greatest gift for everybody. See, the angel, he wasn't talking about the supercharged Max 3000. He was talking about a newborn baby, God's own son, and the greatest gift ever. Someone who's come to rescue us from the messy things that hurt us and to forgive us for the mean things we do to others. But why are you telling me? I'm nobody special. I'm just a shepherd boy, said the shepherd boy. No, you're not a nobody, said the angel. You have got a personal invite to meet the most special somebody. You'll find him tucked in tight, resting his head on a pillow of straw. Then, suddenly, the angel was joined by what seemed like a bajillion angels, all singing in perfect harmony. Fred thought Sarah Jones' solo of All Holy Night was good, but this was the greatest sound he had ever heard. But it wasn't near as good as what was waiting for them in that manger. Fred and the shepherd boy sped through the mud, jumped over rocks and skipped over streams until they finally arrived at the downstairs part of an old stone house. Nervously, Fred and the shepherd boy opened the creaky door and before their very eyes were Mary, Joseph and precious baby Jesus tucked in tight, resting his head on a pillow of straw. Well, hello you two, said Mary with a smile, beaming from year to year. I think somebody wants to say hello, added Joseph, nodding to the boys to get a closer look at Jesus. And as they approached, they saw baby Jesus. Wow, whispered the boys, as they both knelt before Jesus in pure wonder. Oh, I didn't know, but you really are the most special somebody, aren't you? Said Fred. He's the greatest gift ever, added the shepherd boy. Would you like to hold him? Asked Mary. Me? Uh, no way, I I'm way too messy to hold the greatest gift in history, said Fred. But he's not afraid of our messy things. He came to rescue us from our messy things, said Mary, as she smiled and cleaned the mud off Fred's face. Then Fred and the shepherd boy remembered what the angel said too. Jesus came to rescue us from the messy things that hurt us and forgive us for the mean things we do to others. But, but how, said the shepherd, he's just a baby. Not just any baby, said Mary. He's God's own son. And one day he'll grow up and show us how. But I, I don't feel like I deserve it, said Fred. Well, said Joseph with a smile. It wouldn't be a gift if you did, would it? Wow. 
That's way better than the supercharged Max 3000, said Fred. Well, I can't keep this to myself any longer, the shepherd boy said, as he leapt to his feet, hopped past the manger and sped out through the creaky old door, telling everyone about the greatest gift ever. Wait for me, said Fred, as he hopped and sped, but then tripped by the door and fell on his head. Thud! Present day, Fred's house. All of a sudden, Fred opened his eyes and he was back at home as Mam was just finishing the story. And that's the story of the very first Christmas, the end, said Mam. Wow, Mam, said Fred. That was the best thing ever. Have you bumped your head, Fred? Mam said. Ah, uh, why'd you ask, Mam? Said Fred. Well, I know I tell great stories, but this time you were captivated. I think someone might just be getting the supercharged Max 3000 after all, Mam said with a wink. As she wiped off a bit of mud she just spotted on Fred's face. Oh, thanks, Mam. That would be brilliant but I can think of an even better gift this Christmas, said Fred. The one who came to rescue us from our messy things. In fact, said Fred, he is the greatest gift ever. The end.
Well done. You've made it this far. Um, in a minute, we're going to sing a song that I think you'll all know, and then you're going to be unleashed on more mince pies if you've not had enough this Christmas already. So uh, please feel free to stay and have one of those. But for now, we're just going to pray. So um, if you don't mind, we'll just pray and uh, say thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we can come here freely to praise you and worship you. And Lord, we thank you for that first Christmas over 2,000 years ago. Amidst all the glitz and sparkle of today, Lord, and the excitement, it started from you and your son, Jesus. And Lord, we just want to thank you and praise you for that. Thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus down for us so that we could find our way back to you.